Hi, it's Margaret and thank you so much for joining me here on The Gardening Me. Today I am thinning out and bagging my apples on my apple trees. I have three different kinds of apples. I'll give you a little tour in just a sec. So firstly, the reason you thin the apples is so that the crop you get at the end of the season is larger in terms of the apple size itself. If you don't thin the apples, the trees only have so much energy to give to the developing fruits. If you have one apple getting X amount of energy, it'll get larger than if that same amount of energy had to be um, diverted to like three different apples, for example. So that's the reason why we thin apples. And it is a hard thing to do. It's actually harder for me than thinning out seedlings, which is also hard to do. But when you have these apples on the trees and you're like, oh, I could have 10 apples here instead of two, it's one of those things that kind Kind of eh, you just sort of have to force yourself to do it because you know in the end it is the better choice so that's number one number two is in terms of bagging the apples i have to protect them primarily from codling moth and uh, birds if i didn't protect the apples i would literally end up with zero harvest at the end of the season because the apples would either be all pecked at or they would be completely distorted and deformed um, from the codling moth damage so i will show you the uh, bags that i'll be using for that and then yeah and then i'm just going to get to it and get these apples thin so here are the three apple trees this one is a honey crisp one over here that one is a granny smith and then the most productive one i have is right over here and that one is a harrelson just uh, a little bit of uh, background info i've had these trees for many years i think probably eight or nine years. I'll put the exact time when I first planted them on the screen and I'll probably even put a few shots of what they looked like a few years ago because, you know, they have grown quite a bit. The most exciting thing this year though is that the Honeycrisp finally, finally bloomed. So after all these years, I've had apples off both of the other trees, but this one hadn't even bloomed. And my understanding is that Honeycrisp is not what they call a precocious tree that develops really quickly and bears fruit at a young age. So it took its sweet time, but I am super, super excited. And I'm also super excited because we had some late frosts this year. We were still getting frosts near the middle of May, near middle to end of May, like, you know, the 20th, 23rd, something like that, which is really unusual for us. And I was pretty much certain that that was going to be the end of the apple harvest for this year. But no, nope, they have apples on them and it's amazing. So let's just take a closer look here at the uh, Honeycrisp one. There aren't a lot of apples, but there are a few. So here, see we have these here and then down here. So oh, I thought for a second that was some damage, but nope, it's just uh, a little bit of a petal there over here. So yeah, there's a few. Even though this doesn't have a whole lot of apples on it, I am still going to thin it out. I don't want energy going to that tiny one there when I have ones that are much bigger like that. I have to say Granny Smith is one of my favorite apples in terms of fresh eating. I really, really like that tart flavor, but this tree has not really been the most productive at all because I don't even know what it is. The apples will often just fall off before they're ready to harvest at the end of September, early October. They will just be on the ground. I think maybe I've gotten a total of 10 apples that were worth it off of this tree over the years. It did start producing a few years ago, um, but I've just never really gotten the best harvest from it, but I'm not giving up. Every year is a different year and, you know, it's never been a very um, prolific tree in terms of how many apples are set on the tree. And even this year, I'm looking around and I really don't see that many apples. I mean, I see a nice one right here. That one's a nice one. But then I see a lot of this. 
this one I'm going to get rid of. And then there's really, really tiny ones like this that I'm probably going to get rid of. I mean, I'm looking at this tree and I think that if I get 10 apples bagged off of this tree, I'll be lucky. But then here, this one here is the pride and joy of my little apple orchard here. This is Harrelson and this guy has given us beautiful harvests um, for the last, I don't know, six years or something like this. However, there's a big caveat there. This tree does tend to only fruit heavily every other year. And I'm thinking that part of it is because I am not thinning it anywhere near as much as it needs to be thinned. But it's also the one that gives me the most fruit. So there's that conundrum there. I mean, when you look at this, look at these. Look at these apples here. These three here are not as nice as this one. So out of this, I would keep this and get rid of these three. Ideally, what you want to do is leave a space of about six to eight inches in between each apple. But when I'm looking at this, for example, it's like all of the uh, apples on this one particular branch, they're all clustered into this one spot. The branch itself, is pretty long it's about i don't know four feet long or so but all of the apples are in this one foot spot that would literally mean i'd maybe get two apples on this branch and i would love to get maybe three on this branch i don't really see how it matters whether there's this six inch space between two apples. So let's say I had an apple down there, an apple here and an apple here, all six inches apart. Or if on this very same branch, I left three apples all together in this one kind of one foot area and left those to mature. If anyone knows the reason, do let me know. Look at these beauties. I mean, this, this is gonna be so hard to figure out which one to thin. I mean, they all look gorgeous. So the one thing I do want to point out though, and we saw it on that grouping there, and you know, I see it all over, is that some apples already have this. And what this is, is plum curculio. It's um, this little insect that basically makes a hole in the apple and um, deposits an egg in the apple. And when it does that, it leaves this mushroom shaped kind of impression on the fruit. Now, I'm not overly concerned about the plum curculio on the apples themselves because what happens is that the apple is such a firm fruit that the eggs are not able to develop because of that. They get crushed. I'm really not sure what happens, but usually that damage is surface damage. I mean, maybe like, I don't know, a tiny tiny little sliver inside the apple but it's really nothing to be worried about not like in soft fruits like when I get it on plums for example then usually that plum is no longer good for eating but when it gets on apples I've noticed it's not a big deal now if I wanted to make sure to completely avoid this curculio damage without using any kind of spray or insecticide I would probably have to bag these apples when they are teeny, teeny, tiny. I mean, when they're, you know, the size of what, like a cherry maybe, or even smaller. And I just don't feel the need to do that. Before I do anything else, let me talk about the bags I'm using. So I have a couple of different kinds of bags. I bought these guys last year, and these are actual proper fruit bags, fruit protection, bags with drawstrings, I think it says. And I don't know whether they're any better than just regular um, bags that you buy, like these other ones here are just gift bags. Uh, what are they called? Gift, uh, favor gift bags. The only thing is that it's hard to find the gift bags in a larger size. These here are five by seven and the fruit bags are just a little bit bigger at six 
by eight. And I know last year I actually used the gift bags and I used a couple of the smaller sizes and it was a huge mistake. So I got this larger size and I'm pretty sure that should be enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off bagging with these guys. And um, then when I run out of them, I think there's 25 to a bag maybe. And I have four bags. So when I run out of those, then I will switch over to these. So let me just show you quickly a close-up of um, how I'm going to thin and bag a fruit. And then I'm going to speed things up after that. Okay, so here we have a branch here that has a couple of fruit here on the end, one over here. This is the nicest truss here that I can see. So I'm going to look here. And of course, what I'm going to do is pick the largest one, but also I'm going to keep in mind that if it doesn't have curculio damage, so much the better. So here, from what I can see, definitely these three are the smallest. So I'm going to take those off first. And I just use my little snips here because I don't want to risk damaging the, uh, the tree here. So I'm left with these two. And they're both pretty good. They're both pretty nice. I think out of these two, this one is the nicest. And neither of them seem to have curculio damage. But I'm just going to go like this, take this one off. Then I'm going to take these bags. Make sure you get ones with the two-sided drawstring. It makes it so much easier than the ones that only have the drawstring on one side. But it's easy peasy. You just kind of cover up the uh, fruit like this. And then you pull the strings on both sides until it's tight around the bottom of the stem, not there in the top of the fruit, but around the bottom of the stem here. It doesn't matter if you squish a few leaves, that's okay. And the apple will just continue developing around this and uh, fill it in. So now I am gonna go down here. And what I think I'm going to do is, these ones are a little bit smaller. Let's see, uh, I, I'm going to take this one off here. This one is nicer, I think. These two, I think, are pretty small. So I don't think I'm going to leave those on. I'm going to take both of those off. Just, just do it. Just do it. It's tough, but... And yeah, out of these two... It's one of those things, this one isn't as perfectly shaped as that one, but it is bigger. So I am going to take that one off like this. And then get my bag. And... There. And now I have a second one that's bagged. And that's basically it. And I'm just going to go along this branch. And so, for example, I see one, like a tiny one, right here. And this one I'm just going to take off, period. It's so small compared to some of the other ones. Like, look at these guys down here, right? That this is not, to me, worth growing on. Even if it does meet that 6-inch or 8-inch kind of parameter, it's not worth keeping. So that one I'm just going to cut right off. Okay, I am done. On the Harrelson and on the Honeycrisp right here, I did the larger green bags, the six by eight green bags. And then on the Granny Smith, I did the just standard little gift bags. The green ones are proper in quotes, fruit bags. This only got the um, regular gift bags and they're five by seven gift bags. 
Um, normally the Granny Smith, as I said before, doesn't give me the best crop and the apples themselves are quite small compared to the Harrelson. So I'm thinking that it'll work out just fine. A few observations. Firstly, those green bags are actually great because they're really inconspicuous compared to the white ones. You can totally tell <laughs> that there is something going on with this tree, right? Even from a distance, I guess. Whereas that one, not so much. So I really, really like that about them. Other observation is that all of the apples were primarily on the lower part of the tree. And I'm thinking that perhaps the top part of the tree was much more affected by the frosts that we had in May than the lower part. So you can see here, look at all the bags there. I mean, that is crazy, crazy. But then as you go up, fewer and fewer well, even this side of the tree. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here because the right side of the tree set a lot more fruit. As you can see, the left side of the tree, hardly any. And the odd thing about that is the right side of the tree is the west side, and that's where our prevailing winds come from. So anyhow, all that to say, I'm not really sure, but I think in some way the frosts impacted which branches set fruit and that's kind of how it went. The Granny Smith, I basically didn't have to thin hardly at all. I still took some fruits off, but quite frankly, a lot of it was a good spacing to begin with. And what I did notice is there were a lot of um, fruits that did not set. Again, probably due to the frost. So if I zoom in here, you can see like here, well, these are just falling right off. Nothing set here. Again, nothing set on that. There was a lot of that all throughout the tree. The same thing for the Honeycrisp. This one hardly had to thin it at all. And I would say there's roughly, I don't know, maybe 15 apples on that, maybe on the outside. In addition, some of these apples will drop. I mean, there is a phenomenon called the June drop, and that's where the tree itself sheds a bunch of fruit because it knows it can only accommodate so much fruit on those branches. So I am definitely expecting a few of these to drop. Not a ton of them, but a few of them. I always find, you know, maybe half a dozen or so on the ground. Oh, and one last thing. Here is the bucket of thinned fruit. Almost all, I would say 95, maybe more percent of this is from the Harrelson. This is how much fruit I took off. About half of one of these buckets. So that's quite a lot of fruit. So now all we do is wait and watch these ripen. As I said, some of these will drop off and that's just something I have to keep an eye out for. You don't want to leave any of the fruit you took off on the ground either because that will attract rodents and pests and can spread disease. Oh, and that's one last thing actually that I completely forgot to do and I should have done it. Um, but in between trees, I really should have disinfected my clippers with alcohol and I completely forgot to do that. Um, my trees, as far as I know, do not have any diseases, but that doesn't mean that they haven't caught something in the last little while that isn't really apparent right now. So I'll have to definitely remember to do that next time, but just warning for you, Make sure you disinfect your pruners before you uh, make cuts between different, uh, especially fruit trees. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for joining me today and we will see you next time. Bye.